All right. Welcome. This is Don Kaufman over at Theo Trade. In uh, this kind of quick video, what we're going to discuss is a bit about stop orders. Dun, dun, dun. I'm not a huge advocate of stop orders, and not because it's not necessarily a relevant type of an order, but it's because most truly don't understand okay, some of the mathematics, some of the statistics in trading, and ultimately why they get stopped out. And that's what I'm really going to kind of explain in this particular video is ultimately one of the flaws in <clears throat> not necessarily the utilization of stop orders, okay, but kind of the flaw in how people use the stop order altogether. And I'm going to explain it in, and I wanted to find a uh, kind of a relevant stock, something like Twitter. So here we are on Thinkorswim, and I put Twitter in. It's pretty much sitting at $25 on the button, right? So it's $25.02. Let's just set up a scenario here where you're going to go out, and you're going to go out about 30 days. Well, there's no specific 30-day option, right? This is a 26-day option. This is a 34-day option. I'll use the 34-day option. Now, bear with me for a moment. In no way, shape, or form am I actually going to trade an option in this particular example, but we're going to use what options really tell us about stock price movement to be able to assess why a stop order works or why a stop order doesn't work. So, here we are looking at the 34 day options and I'm considering and actually doing for instance a stock trade and something that a lot of people might do on a stock trade is they might go over here to the ask and again I'm on thinkorswim pretty comfortable on thinkorswim right click on it come down to like buy custom and a lot of people use things like an OCO bracket order all right and let's let's assume the stock is trading right smack at 25 bucks cuz it's going to make our example nice and clean right so i go out and i i purchase this stock in an oco bracket order that's a one cancels other i purchase the stock right at 25 bucks i set my upside target at 27 okay my downside risk is 24 so this is kind of like that quintessential risk one to be able to make two scenario. And and again, kind of bear with me as I go through this and you're like, oh, well, where are we? Where are we going with this? Well, this is exactly where we're going. So in this scenario, right? I buy the stock at 25, I'll sell it if it goes up to 27 or if it goes down to 24. Either one of these are tied together through of course what? A bracketed order. So in the end, what am I doing? If I'm buying the stock at 25 to risk one, risking ultimately one to be able to make how much up to 27 which is two now it sounds all well and good but okay the biggest problem we have over here is did you look at the mathematics behind the probability of us going to 24 versus the probability of us going to 27 now you notice one thing i did not bring into this conversation is what you thought about the stock it doesn't matter what you think about the stock well, I think it's going up. I know it's going up. I think I know it's going up. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you know. I don't care what you think you know. The reality is, in the end, if you were to do the same trade a few hundred times or a few thousand times, what's the law of probabilities going to do to you in this trade? Let's go find out because within the options chain, a lot can be deciphered. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go 34 days out, and again, I'm going to assume that you had this, you know, risk a buck to be able to make two bucks kind of scenario for the next 34 days, and I want you to look at the probability, okay? So we're going to look at the puts, the 24 puts, okay? And you see it says volume and open interest, volume and open interest, but just change that and change to options, theoreticals, and Greeks, and come over here to probability of touching. There it is, 70, okay, we're going to round it. 76% probability of you touching, probability of touching the 24 level anytime between now and 34 days from now. That's all you need to know, okay? Let's, let's not look any further than that. You're like, how is the probability of touching going to be? Hold on. I mean, that, you know, probability of touching, that's yeah, a whole other video we're going to have to do. But, okay. I want you to look at the probability of touching 24, which is roughly 76, versus the probability of touching 
27, which is roughly 53. So the probability of you touching 24, and if you hit 24, what's going to happen? You're going to get stopped out of the trade. The probability of you hitting 24 is substantially greater than the probability of you hitting 27. It's not the stop order that's flawed. It's really, okay, most traders thinking that's actually flawed. And through the course of some videos, a couple of classes, we're actually going to change this, this classical idea of like risk a buck to be able to make two is totally insane when you start looking at, you know, very simple ideas like probability of touching. And then, of course, somebody, you know, says, well, well, what if I'm right substantially more than I'm wrong? You can be right, you know, 60, 70 percent of the time. That doesn't necessarily matter when you're getting stopped out 76% of the time. And that's one of the ways really that you can think of and use probability of touching in some of your trading. So the next time you look at a stop order, consider this example. Much more to come in some of the Theo trade videos here. Hope you guys kind of enjoyed looking at this. And of course, we'll put something together here for probability of touching, probability of expiring, in the money, out of the money, you name it, we'll have some videos for it. Thanks a lot, everybody. This is Don Kaufman for Theo Trade.